can't even imagine. He said, y'all, y'all, y'all humans down there, you can't even imagine. It's never entered into your mind or your heart the things that God has prepared for them that love him. We cannot imagine, but there's a table spread. He's got a chair there for you. Will it be filled? Will it be filled? Have you received that precious gift? There was cause for rejoicing. The world looked on. They thought it was just a bunch of poor folks that had to stay in the barn. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they might look at us today and say, them poor folks, they just don't know nothing. <laughs> But they were in the presence of Almighty God and didn't even know it. Are we in his presence today and just dismiss it like it's nothing? See, you have the privilege to do that today if you want to. But there's coming a day you won't dismiss it. You're going to be wide-eyed and have all of your senses to know, my God, why didn't I run? Why didn't I run to him? Why didn't I accept him? Why didn't I receive his gift? See, I believe they'll be able to hear us singing. <laughs> I believe that they'll be able to hear the rejoicing at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the Bible says he's going to gird himself, that same little baby that laid in the manger. He became vulnerable to men. So he could save you and me. That same Jesus is going to gird himself up. And for the thousands of us, <laughs> he's going to serve us. Come and dine at my table. Come and dine. Sister Faye, we're going to sing a song that's never been sung. <laughs> it ain't never been sung. And the Bible says the angels have to step back. Because the bride will be home. And we'll begin to worship and sing and lift him up. See, that's what he's longed for since the beginning of time. He created the angels to worship him. They don't have a choice. They, they just do what they are created to do. But he created you and I with a will. And see, what he's longed for all these thousands of years is for his bride to seek him out and meet him in the place that he's prepared. And what will sound sweeter to his ears than anything else is that song that he's picked out. That we're going to sing that even the angels, he's not even going to let them take part. Because he's going to say, y'all don't know what it's like <laughs> to be lost and not know me. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to have been separated from me. You don't know what it's like to call out my name in desperation. You don't know. You don't have a clue what it's like. I want you to listen to the voices of the redeemed. As they praise and worship me through eternity. As we begin to join together and sing before the throne of God. I don't care about a cramp. 
I don't care about a crown. <laughs> because when I met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he became Lord of my life, he took foremost position in my heart. Nothing should be above him. My God, what love he displayed to reach down his long arm. He said, I won't stop at anything short of giving everything I've got to bring you home to me. I've sent every last thing I could. I've done everything I could do to make sure that you make to make sure that you take hold, to make sure that you don't fall. He said, not only did I send my son, I've, you've got legions and legions and legions of angels guarding you and watching over you, lest at any time that enemy, that serpent, 